Uh, hi, Faye. Good afternoon to you. Uh, my, my only experience with this uh, sort of an event uh, dates back to 71, uh, 72 actually, when uh, the 1971 batch of Indian POSW returned from Pakistan. I was there to receive a flight from Harish Singh Ji from my squadron, among others. And uh, it didn't take us that long. It didn't take us that long at all. Because uh, they were, they walked in, got into an aircraft and arrived at Palam. So the weight at Vaga was hardly anything. I don't recall there was any weight at all. So do you see this then, uh, Air Marshal, as unusual? I don't know whether this is uh, by design or by default. Uh, but with these people, uh, it could be both. Um, being, being predictable is not one of their virtues. So let's see. I hope it is not uh, deliberate. You hope it's not deliberate. Um, we also know that Pakistan had requested that the handover happen during the beating, uh, beating the retreat ceremony, which India flatly said no to. So obviously India is keen here not to make a spectacle uh, of, of the whole thing. And uh, as a result, the border security force cancelling the ceremony altogether just to make sure that it doesn't, Perhaps the handover doesn't get delayed long enough to sort of come in the way of the ceremony yes, or vice versa. I mean, much the same thing happened during Nachiketa's return via Vaga border. Uh, they, you know, they, he, he, there was no public spectacle, so to say. Mm. Uh, but one thing has changed from the time uh, that uh, Nachiketa came in 1999. Uh, I don't know how many people would remember, but in 2014, on the Vaga side, which is the mm -hmm. Pakistani side, there was actually in one of the ceremonies, there was a suicide bomb attack. 40 people died yes. in that stadium complex where people actually sit and watch. It was a very serious incident and it raised a lot of question mark over the Pakistani security on their side. So it's mm -hmm. also a bit of a security issue as well. There are a large yes. number of people standing close to a place where a sensitive thing is happening is not advisable in any case. Uh, okay, so I, I just want to bring in uh, Sushant Sareen. Uh, Mr. Sareen, India's handling of this entire process of the handover, uh, we understand this is being driven right now by the Ministry of External Affairs. Uh, your, I, I want your understanding of what's actually going on. Is it a security issue? Is it an issue as per the Geneva Convention that uh, you cannot make a public spectacle out of the officer in question? What's really going on? No, this issue had to be handled by the uh, Ministry of External Affairs. Uh, and I don't think we can compare what is happening today with what happened in 71, 72, uh, because that was, uh, uh, you know, and the repatriation of the POWs at that point of time was as part of a larger, uh, uh, you know, process, uh, because there were about 90 or 1,000 Pakistani POWs in Indian custody. Uh, and a couple of thousand Indians in the Pakistani custody. So uh, clearly, I don't think the two situations would be quite comparable. And a lot of toing and froing had already happened at that point of time. Uh, in this case, uh, please keep in mind uh, the very short time span in, a span in which this entire uh, incident has unfolded. So day before yesterday, uh, uh, you know, the plane was shot down, uh, the pilot was captured. Yesterday, uh, the Pakistanis first tried to uh, use him as a bargaining chip, uh, you know, try to behave like kidnappers and use him as a hostage and demand some ransom in the form of some kind of talks or something. And then finally, uh, maybe under pressure, maybe under, I, I doubt if better sense prevailed over them, but uh, maybe under pressure, uh, they decided that, uh, you know, and the, in the interest of wanting to cool things down, because they, they, they probably weren't able to take it up the escalation ladder much more. Uh, they decided that they'll repatriate him and that might help cool things down. Uh, so, and then today, this gentleman has to be handed over to India. So if you look at the short time span, uh, you know, uh, I, I, I think a delay of a couple of hours is no big deal. But clearly, the Pakistanis, if the reports, as uh, you are uh, suggesting, are correct, uh, they might be wanting to have a spectacle. They did try to make a spectacle out of the gentleman, uh, you know, by airing videos. There are some fake videos of his wife uh, appealing uh, for his release. Although, from whatever we know, uh, the family has been remarkably stoic. 
uh, and and very very brave uh, in in the face of this adversity uh, they haven't you know come around uh, you know doing the kind of breast beating or demonstrating on the streets or wailing and ranting and raving uh, very very dignified silence uh, very resolute silence and i think uh, uh, even more than uh, you know the officer who's been trained to handle uh, this kind of an adversity uh, i would doff my hat off uh, to the family uh, which has behaved with such equanimity uh, at in in such a trying time uh, so a couple of hours delay is yes. power for the course and yes. i think the government uh, has handled this extremely well uh, number one by not giving into uh, pakistani uh, yeah. blackmail uh, and number two by uh, sticking to the uh, letter of the law and i think that's the way it should be uh, and and by denying pakistanis the opportunity of you know parading the gentleman around or making a spectacle i think that is exactly the way we should have handled this uh, if people in, in on the indian side who wanted a tamasha or wanted to witness a tamasha uh, i say just too bad for them uh, uh, i i don't think we should uh, in, engage in this kind of a tamasha anyways absolutely uh, it's uh, taking forward to uh, to left hand general vp singh who's still with us um, do you also believe at this point that uh, you know that, that there should be no tamasha that india does have uh, you know some uh, in some ways the upper hand because of the negotiation because of uh, the stand taken by our ministry of external affairs and just bringing wing commander abhinandan back should be the only priority at this point Yeah, I said it uh, some time back that uh, mm. as far as India is concerned, there is a process we have to follow that, and there is just no question of any spectacle or uh, any show of uh, this uh, uh, wing commander coming back to us. And I, they, I think they have done a right thing by cancelling the ceremony in the evening. It will be a very very quiet kind of a proper procedure through which uh, wing commander. Vinandan will be back with us, mm. and in a way, uh, sorry to say, but uh, the media has also been kept away from there. That's also good in a way because uh, that is how it should be, and we will have uh, many more occasions here and after to speak yes. with him or to talk to many other people responsible for this process. So right now, I think it's absolutely in fitness of things that he comes back to us in a proper protocol, in a correct manner, and uh, we go on thereafter from there. Well, as far as the media being kept away, uh, uh, sir, we, you won't get any argument from us. Uh, we're completely uh, on board with the fact that procedure ought to be followed, <laughs> and uh, the hygiene of the situation or uh, the yes. sanitised situation must be uh, must be maintained yes. at all points. Uh, but I want to draw the attention of our panel to. The